I'm Aziza McGill Allende, and I'm honored to have as my special guest, presidential historian John Meacham. Mr. Meacham is a respected author and frequent guest on commentators on television news programs. His most recent book, a biography of the first presidential Bush titled Destiny and Power, has just been published in paperback. It's great to have you here, Mr. Meacham. Thank you for having me. So I'm going to ask you about the book in just a moment, but I'd like to begin by focusing on the presidential election. If I'm that's shocked okay. that you would find that more interesting. <laughs> Some analysis have said that there has never been anything like this campaign. What are your thoughts? Well, it's unprecedented in this sense. Uh, we've never had a major party nominee who was as l unconventionally prepared for the office as mm. the Republican nominee. Uh, in many ways, Secretary Clinton is one of the most conventionally prepared. Uh, it's not a necessarily a criticism of Mr. Trump. Uh, it's very much part of his campaign that he is not part of the system, that uh, he is not an expert. And if experts were so great, we wouldn't have the problems we have, which right. is an, an ancient populist question. So in many ways, uh, it is unprecedented in the sense that the choice is so stark in terms of the personalities and experiences and really the almost the, the norms that those candidates would bring to the highest office. Right, now do you think the popularity of social media has plays a role in that at all? Absolutely, I think social media has been critical. I think this is a presidential campaign brought to you by Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, which may explain why 80% of Americans are disgusted by the campaign, uh, which is a pretty remarkable number when you think about it. The other uh, new media force that is shaping it is this is the first reality television campaign. Uh, Donald Trump would not be the Republican nominee if he hadn't spent 14 years as a number as a top 10 TV show host. Uh, and so I think you have this intersection of celebrity culture and political culture as well as social media. Uh, in the old days, which is to say even four, eight, 12 years ago, you would have politicians using uh, mass media in, to a political end. Mm -hmm. To some extent now, we have uh, mass media people who are using mass media in politics. Right, right. So a number of high-profile Republicans, including George H.W. Bush, have announced that they intend to vote for Hillary Clinton. Does that surprise you? No. Uh, I mean, it surprises me in the sense that uh, George H.W. Bush uh, first voted for president in 1948. Okay. Uh, he was 21 years old. You had to be, you were 21 then. He voted for Thomas E. Dewey against Harry Truman. He has not voted for a Democrat for president uh, since then. But uh, if you think about his life, if you think about the life of most of the presidents of our, of our lifetime, they have come out of a certain set of experiences, a certain set of expectations uh, that the President of the United States is a custodian, not just the Chief Executive Officer of the government, but he's a custodian of certain political, social, cultural, economic, even moral norms. Mm -hmm. And I think that President Bush's fear is that Trump's narcissism and self-absorption would lead Trump to fail to meet the central test for George Bush, which of, of any president or any public servant, which is to what extent does that person put the country first? Mm -hmm, okay. And President Bush, on several occasions, did things against his own political self-interest because he believed it was in the national interest. My sense is that as he's thought about this, he realizes that Trump may well be constitutionally incapable of that. Mm, okay. So speaking of President Bush, what was it about him that intrigued you enough to want to write his biography? Uh, the fact that he was, is, uh, one of the most quietly, persistently charismatic people I've ever met. And you don't often hear the word charisma uh, associated with him. Back when he was in active politics, people used to say that uh, George Bush often reminded female voters of their first husband, which mm -hmm. apparently is not a good thing. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, when I first met him in the late 1990s, I had this kind of caricature view of him. A lot of it came out of Saturday Night Live, where Dana Carvey did it, you know, impressions of him, you know, mm -hmm. not going to do it, you know, all that. <laughs> and, and within 20 minutes or so of being around him, I realized that this was a, a man of parts. It was a, a man of, of great complexity. And I understood why 54% of Americans, and believe me, no one in the 2016 election is going to get 54%. 54% of the country trusted him with their fates in a nuclear age. Mm -hmm. And part of the art of biography, part of the point of biography, 
is to try to close the gap, explain, explain it and close the gap between public impression and private reality when there is a gap. Right. And in his case, there was an enormous one. So what, do you think that it was now his infamous proclamation, and I quote, read my lips, no new taxes, that led to his defeat in 1992? It certainly didn't help. Uh, President Bush, I asked him on a number of occasions what his greatest regret was in public life. Mm -hmm. And he would say, shouldn't have said, read my lips. <laughs> uh, so at least he's candid. It, it, it broke the Republican Party. Uh, the Republican Party was becoming more conservative then. George Bush was never a movement conservative. Okay. Uh, he was always more in the center. Uh, there are now six of those Republicans left almost. Uh, and so when he made that pledge, he was trying to consolidate the conservative base and say, I am in fact one of you. Okay. Then fewer than two years later, he breaks it. And that sends Newt Gingrich uh, out the front door of the White House and begins a revolution that led to the tumultuous election of 1994 and the, I think much of the partisanship that we've seen since then. Right. So in terms of political allegiance, our country seems to be split pretty much down the middle. Does that mean it's going to be difficult for the next president, whether it's Clinton or Trump, to govern efficiently? Yes, it does. Uh, we have about, depending on the polls, 35 percent of the country say they're Democrats, about 30 percent say they're Republicans, and the rest are independents. A lot of millennials, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, identify as independents. But in a, if you have two-thirds of the electorate that won't move, right. uh, the independents are, are hard, and, and they're uncontrollable. I think it will be very difficult. Um, yeah. There's very little consensus right now on what we should do. Uh, there's some agreement on the problems, but not enough, yeah. frankly. Um, there's very few incentives to compromise. And politics is fundamentally a human business. Mm -hmm. It's run by people on human factors. Uh, what does a politician do when they ask for your vote? They're asking for your respect, your affection, your even trust. your love, yeah. your trust, yeah. And so there's a kind of covenant there. And that's a human uh, interaction. Right. And so if you want someone to vote against their direct interest, you have to make it uh, rewarding for them. Okay. And for a congressman or a senator today to vote for the other party on a major piece of legislation is to invite what is now called the primarying, uh, where you will get a primary opponent from the base of your own party. Okay. Very few lawmakers worry about a general election anymore because the states are pretty polarized, the districts are way polarized. Mm -hmm. Out of 435 House seats, there are really only 40 that are in play in a mm. given year. So you're, if you win the nomination, you're fine. To get the nomination, you need to be right with the party uh, or left with the party yeah. uh, on the Democratic Winner side. Or the other. <laughs> exactly, there's always the other. Um, and that reflexive partisanship, I think, is something that's not going away and will make it very difficult for the 45th president to, yeah. uh, to govern. Wow, well, Mr. Meacham, thank you so much for coming and sharing your opinions with us.